Hi, everyone. Um, I'm mindful we are the ones standing between you and uh, hearing the finalist and also finding out who is the winner of uh, this year's Great Pitch Contest. Um, but um, I promise you that this is going to definitely worth your time. Um, this is a subject that, irrespective of your job title, your industry, or if you're a startup or a media company or a business, I think um, you get exposed to every day and probably it also impacts uh, the industry in which you're working on. And obviously we're talking about the media industry. Um, I'm going to invite three senior media leaders to join me on stage um, in just a minute um, to mainly discuss what's really happening and what's unfolding in the media industry right now. You probably have seen loads of headlines recently, um, so we'll talk about that. But also, because we are a startup event, um, we want to discuss how specifically um, Warner Brothers Discovery, TVN, the Times Group, and RTL Ad Alliance are considering and working with startups uh, in terms of driving new growth and creating new opportunities. But a huge part of our discussion um, is going to be about new venture models, perhaps new investment types that you haven't heard before. Um, and before we um, get into that panel discussion and before I invite my guests on stage, I want to talk about a bit about the venture model that we will discuss um, shortly and just to give you a bit of context. And that specific investment type, um, it's something that we call media capital and media for equity. Um, not very prevalent in Poland just yet, but hopefully that will change. Um, however, it's a model that has evolved rapidly over time. And I believe it's something that both as a founder, if you are in the market for fundraising or if you're thinking of raising investment in the next six to nine months, it's something that you should know of. But if you're a media company as well, um, trying to maybe reduce costs of acquiring new customers or perhaps you want to optimize your inventory, that's again something that you want to talk about. Um, marketing is one of those things where it can really break or make your company. I think it's one of the key challenges, the top three reasons why most companies, when they scale and they try to go to market, they fail. But if you do it right, obviously, um, the benefits can be far greater. So I was really curious to know, at a growth stage, um, a company at a growth stage, how much money they actually spend on advertising as a percentage of revenue. So we picked up randomly these six companies. These are six well-known brands in Europe. Um, obviously, there are many studies that go through hundreds of these companies' annual accounts. And you realize that 30% of the revenue is actually spent on advertising. Of course, you have companies like HelloFresh or Trivago spending up to 60% of their revenue on advertising. But where does that spend actually go? Um, and probably unsurprisingly, a lot of the spend actually goes into digital advertising. Digital advertising has um, doubled linear TV in the last few years. And if you zoom in on that digital advertising, a lot of the spend goes into social media, into search, um, and most recently into video advertising. Of course, traditional media companies are trying to um, make up essentially that threat, that loss uh, from the likes of Facebook and um, Amazon. And we've seen recently um, the rise of streaming services. In 2022, uh, 2020, 2021, we had 16 streaming services. One year later, we had 32 and counting. Um, and Disney Plus um, has more followers and more subscribers than Netflix. Disney Plus launched in November 2019. Netflix has been around for two decades. But maybe let's talk a bit about where that actually spend goes. Um, because 50% of the market is concentrated in the hands of a very few. And again, not a surprise that the likes of Google and Amazon and, and Meta um, own a huge chunk of that market. And that dominance is just growing and growing. And what is happening is that it's pushing a lot of publishers, unfortunately, or squeezing them out of the market. Um, perhaps you're very familiar with some of the headlines that we have here. BuzzFeed was one of the first companies um, this year to announce shutting down operations of BuzzFeed News, uh, which then became a chain of other future announcements, including Vice and most recently MTV News, um, which shut down operations after 36 years. 
And the, of course, not the only reason, but one of the main reasons this happened is because, for example, BuzzFeed relied so much on Facebook in the early days, growing that content, the followers. But of course, things with Facebook have changed. And after 2016, after the US elections, Facebook received a lot more scrutiny and they deprioritized that content and the news. And of course, BuzzFeed had to suffer. So I think it's probably quite clear, and obviously we'll discuss this in a minute, that media industry is going through a lot of change. A lot of media companies are going through a formidable transformation and facing a lot of threat um, from these digital giants. But how is this impacting startups and impacting us? The problem is that a lot of companies, a lot of young brands are starting to advertise on digital as the first channel when you start growing your brand and trying to bring your follow, uh, grow your followers and your, your image. And that's great. But you, it, you reach a point, perhaps, when your capital available, but also the digital channels that you had at your disposal, just simply can't match the needs um, of your company. So what happens is that you reach those diminishing returns. So no matter how much money you, you try to invest in advertising, for one dollar that you spend, you realize less than one dollar in revenue. So what has happened is that a lot of brands are starting to think beyond digital channels. And they probably think about TV. And in the last few years, we've seen a rise of such brands. In the UK alone, in 2020, we had over 600 new digital startups advertising on TV. But there's a tiny problem there as well. With these digital channels, it's relatively easy to test. You don't need perhaps that much capital to get started. With TV, above the line media, it's something that not a lot of startups know. Um, requires expertise and also capital available. And perhaps two years ago, that would not have been a problem. You would go back to the market, you would raise a bit more money, and then you can pay for your campaign. But specifically in the last couple of years, what has happened, and more recently in the last 12 months, Venture capital has reached nine years level slow. And if you are a later stage company, if you're thinking of growing your brand, especially at that late stage, the capital deployment these days has slowed down even further. So if you're looking at two sides of the market, we've got the media companies facing this threat, and then you've got digital startups, perhaps like yourself, that are thinking of how am I gonna win that market? How can I create a new ca category for my, for my brand? And you have these two challenges on both sides of the platform. And this is exactly why media capital and media for equity, as some of us call this investment type, has got so much awareness and so much um, interest recently, because it addresses both sides of the market. It fills the funding gap if you're a startup. It fills the marketing gap as well if you require that expertise, but also the media utilization gap for a media company. Benefits are tremendous and extensive on both sides. And I don't want to take too much of the time speaking about this right now because we will discuss this in a second. But what I can say is that it has, um, for both sides of uh, the platform, there are a lot of advantages. Um, for a company, for a startup, you have to think that this allows you to um, amplify your reach, um, extend your runway, because essentially you're not trading cash, you're trading equity in your company. And also that expertise that comes with working with a large media company. And we'll talk about some really interesting examples in a few minutes. As a media company, you get access to a new set of customers that perhaps they would never thought would of advertising on TV before. And if they are successful, if the first media for equity campaign is successful with your media company, then they will be more likely to transition and actually pay for cash for the next campaign. But media capital is one of the many other forms of corporate venturing that we'll also be discussing today. Um, and on that note, I would like to invite on stage my panelists and my guests, um, uh, Dorota from Warner Brother Discovery TVN, Poland, um, Stefan Haeckel from RTL Ad Alliance, and Neville from the Times Group.
we have an extra chair if anyone wants to join us, but uh, it's going to be just the four of us for now. Um, I didn't introduce um, you in detail for a reason, because I think all of you have such, um, such exciting background and amazing experience. So um, I would like to take a few minutes to talk about that. And also, when you present yourself and introduce yourself, um, please tell us a bit about your background in the company as well that you work for, because I think it will become really relevant in the next few minutes. Neville, we can start with you. Uh, Neville Taraporwala. Easier to pronounce my family name, but people can call me Neville. I'm ex-Microsoft, ex-Yahoo. I currently am the president of the Times Group North America. The Times Group is uh, India's largest media house, and we have an international operation based out of San Francisco. And we invest in early stage companies off the back of our, uh, uh, our balance sheet. So we, we, we are a company in India which has uh, multiple media assets, uh, right from print, television, uh, radio, outdoor, uh, the internet business. And uh, what we do is really look for early stage companies which are looking at India as a potential market. And most of these companies are uh, around different parts of the world looking at uh, the, you know, the one of the largest economic markets in the world. And we help them scale in that market. So that's what I do. I've been doing that for last almost a decade and been very successful with at least about 30 plus investments across different markets. Thank you. Dorota? Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for the invitation. It's great to be here. Look, um, today I'm responsible at uh, TV Warner Bros. Discovery for revenue and all kind of the commercial partnership. But uh, my background is really like uh, all uh, different commercial activities. I was responsible for many markets in terms of the new business development, uh, new setup, as well like uh, for um, transformation of eSport the last couple of years, including also managing Eurosport, uh, as this is my hobby. But um, uh, today really like uh, focusing on the, on the commercial partnerships, and I think that's why it's very interesting to be here for me. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Stefan Hackel. I'm um, in the new biz or biz dev department of RTL Group, um, the part of RTL Group who is called, which is called RTL Ad Alliance. Um, what we're doing is we are trying to help advertiser to cross border business, to um, start in markets they probably don't understand fully especially when it's about media and advertising and target groups, audiences. And our main goal is to consult and to connect uh, on the one hand side to keep balance on advertisers' success and on the media partners we're representing. Those are maybe a hundred TV channels across Europe mainly, um, some 40 radio stations, um, loads of digital platforms and video platforms and now recently also print and the assets of print in Bertelsmann or RTL Group. Great. Thank you all. Um, maybe let's start a bit talking about your experience and what you've seen um, changing perhaps in the media industry. Um, I, I think we can easily agree that it's going through some transformational change right now. Um, and maybe um, we can start with this very broad question for a reason, then we can talk a bit about how you've worked with companies in the past, what kind of models you've, um, you have adopted, and then we can go back to the media for equity because you all have very interesting perspective on that. Um, Neville, we can start with you. Um, you've, you've, you've been in the media industry for, for forever. What are the kind of challenges or changes that you're seeing from your perspective? So uh, I'll speak about uh, my perspectives about having been in the media business for such a long time. I've actually seen it change significantly. I worked in the traditional side of the business, which was the print business. Uh, I actually moved over uh, to the digital side of the business way back in 95 when there was not much of digital then. Uh, went on to be the MD for Yahoo in India. So I've actually seen both sides, and I've actually seen the transformation significantly, and I'm actually seeing that coming back again, because at that point of time, the traditional business, media businesses were actually trying to grapple with the digitization. The landscape was changing pretty significantly, 
and at that point of time uh, media publishers had to do something we have we've heard and seen a lot of uh, uh, media publishers in the united states really crashing uh, their traditional businesses because digital just simply took over i think uh, in and, and i can speak about india in india i think as a group uh, we took uh, pretty significant steps to see how we could you know be part of the times changing times rather than being crashed due to digitization which is where our investment model came into play where we actually looked at the startup ecosystem uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem which ultimately will become the future advertisers and that was one way to future proof the media business uh, for the media owners so i've seen this transition i've now seen digital becoming extremely exp uh, expensive for customer acquisition uh, if you look at all the big giants like uh, facebook google etc i'm quite sure all the entrepreneurs out here who are using all these digital channels to acquire customers would find it expensive to buy and uh, it's it's sort of getting back and people are now saying okay fine it's expensive to buy here how do i go somewhere else so i think i've seen this huge transformation and within which it's the media companies the media buyers the sellers everybody is trying to find that sweet spot for them to operate in dorota specifically for tvn has been quite a journey for the last few years um and also we discussed even yesterday about the rise of ai and how that is impacting how people advertise and essentially what what's the future of search in the end but what are the things that you're seeing well, I would say if, if this is a question about the challenge, I think for some time already we see the challenge of the technology and uh, how it's changing the world, which is not on the, from the traditional media perspective, but I think what is the most important from the consumer perspective. And uh, being in the traditional media before, uh, I'm legacy discoverer, then, you know, the whole different adaptation to the market, transactions, mergers, and so on. Today, as a Warner Media, we see and we build the business in a way that on the one hand, we're trying to provide the consumers in a traditional way that what is expected, because I think sitting today with the startups, I think at the end it's always important this end user, yes, and how we want to respond to the needs. So at the same time, talking about our experience, we started to develop quickly the all new platforms, new products, which, uh, how to say, follow the technology and follow the consumption changes on the consumer side to uh, be able to, to deliver the products or the product, the products and the environment to, to, uh, to answer uh, the, the drive which comes from the technology innovation and from the innovation generally. So if you, if you talk about the challenges, I would say that the constant challenge probably with the greatest speed is like how to use this technology shift, how to respond quicker better how to be uh, most uh, most innovative than anyone else around uh, around of us how to uh, talking about the streaming which Diana has mentioned streaming services we are operating HBO Max we have uh, the biggest uh, streaming in Poland also player and you know how the one of the challenge how to quickly understand a uh, consumer behaving and everything what we do from the direct contact in order to be better in order to respond better and at the same time which i think also is very important from the media perspective it's to deliver and constantly keep trust and the relation with the viewers because especially being a media when we have a news when we have a the same important news as ent entertainment the trust is very important and I think there are many examples. I think that, again, talking about, thinking about where we are today and at, at this conference, and thinking about the new ventures which you develop, the new ideas, I think, and, you know, coming back to, you know, what you said about this interest with the digital media and traditional media, one thing, traditional is not only traditional anymore because it has changed. The second thing is the trust is very important, and that's why, we see that, we experience, even from our own product, when we develop the digital products, when we put them in the media which has a big reach, we see how it changes. And at the end, and the third point, the technology, the challenges, everything, as I said, the trust is very important, and for us in the both ways. With the direct contact, with the direct clients, consumers, and with our client, so the companies like you, who has advertising uh, or put advertisements with us. 
So that's the challenge. At the same time, probably the biggest opportunity. It's exactly, and I think that's, um, that's the next point that I'm, I'm going to bring as well. And I agree, I think the lines between what we call above and below the line advertising are, are blurry um, or getting blurred. Um, Stefan, RTL Ad Alliance started with, uh, with a mission basically to build this powerhouse against the likes of Google and um, Amazon and Facebook. And um, tell us a bit about that, I guess, and what opportunities or challenges you've seen in the market that led to that well. RTL Ad Alliance. Yes, thanks. Um, I can just only agree on what you said, and um, you said it also in the beginning. So against them, no, not against them. Of course, we have a legacy, and we are a, a company which is very local and cluttered and specialists on their market, but at the same time global. So there, for me, uh, speaking about challenges, it's the market trends. We have to adapt that, and we want to be with the audience in all that market, so it's we, we're following or we're defining market trends. So the first challenge whenever it's market trends is for me that the, the consolidation of the players at the moment, so or consolidation of everybody at the moment. So that um, GAFAM, we said it, we expect them, or you showed it also, they are taken already, like what is it, 50% of the global advertising budgets of everybody Globally, and then in different then, markets, it's even more, yeah. So um, that's huge, and that's, uh, I don't want to call it an issue, but this is something we need to address it or be ready for that. And um, we were very bold and very early on with that, so Altera Airlines was already um, a response to that maybe 20 years ago. Um, so this is the one thing. And the other thing is challenge in the matter of audience or consumption. Um, we, we, we will talk about content later, but I think the hunger for content has never been bigger. The need, and I said it to you before, big screen is, I mean, on the race. And at the same time, audiences are just fluently like going from one content to the other, one platform to the other. Nobody really understands and know how to put in measurements, put in the performance and respond to that. And this is the challenge, and you cr can create a thousand digital products if you don't understand that. You will have that challenge forever on. But um, thanks, thanks, Stefan. Um, as Dorota said, I think these challenges also present a lot of opportunities. Um, and I think all of you here have worked with different corporate venture models. Um, I'm, I will start with Dorota because um, um, I'm quite familiar with uh, TV and ventures. Actually, you can tell us. Um, at what stage um, TV and venture is, if you're still looking for investments, but also I think what has happened in the last eight, seven years, discovery, the initial um, discovery acquisition and then the merger with Warner Media Brothers, um, that in of itself, as part of a consolidation, as Stefan, you said, um, it's a response to market, to the market challenges. Um, how, how does the group work right now with startups? What are the kind of models or opportunities you see or what is happening now or what could come in the future including for example TVN Ventures which is a form of corporate venture development well it's a very interesting question and it's kind of the robust answer probably so I would try to give you a quick snapshot on the one hand of course as a, we are the biggest investments the second biggest investment in Poland American investments and uh, we use the or we cooperate with the startups in extended way um, I think that the first layer, the first level, is of course uh, the fact that we are uh, trying to collaborate and cooperate, I would say, with the all uh, startups ecosystem in order to uh, respond better to the challenges, but also to grab the opportunity in terms of the providing, creating a products. And the uh, uh, possibilities and the scope is enormous because if you talk about the datafication, which is today, um, it's a big opportunity to use in the uh, journalism data, uh, based data facts, or with the fake news and everything, what you see as a challenge of today is a big thing. We use the startups and, and the different solutions which we uh, are getting together with the all different production, talking from the Cube to XR Studios through the all different AI possibilities 
we merge the data and marketing to better response. So in the, the, the way how we use the startups ecosystem, including artificial intelligence companies, that's something what is almost on a daily basis. At the same time, I think if we, um, coming, if we come back to the uh, media equity subject, I think in this part of the Europe, probably it wasn't developed so much as in the uh, rest of the Europe. We have a few experience and we have a few cases which we have done before pandemic time in, and it was very interesting and I think very promising. For, from my perspective today, where we are today, and talking about Poland or this part of Europe where the majority of the inventory is sold out, especially with our company, we have a very big interest, so sometimes it's not a natural, quick uh, way of seeking for this solution because you know in, there is no inventory. But at the same time, if you think about what uh, digital space is bringing us inventories, uh, which we possess as well, or if we think about what media, which has a trust brand, can create with the owner which we have, or common solution, I think that this is the new uh, opportunity which we have together uh, with finding a right model, or the model where we, knowing wh who we want to target, where we want to get, we can create together. So uh, the pure media equity cases we, we, we have done in the past, uh, I would say they are they have been promising, so there is no bad experience. I would say it's a good experience, very good. But at the same time, for me, it's a more interesting to find the good models and with the right understanding what will be the target and how, what we want to achieve from the both sides. Because there's a one more point to encourage you all in the room. Uh, I think for the media companies, um, being or cooperating with the startups ecosystem, there is also a way to be upfront in terms of the innovation, which is a very important. So I think that there, there are possibilities to find the mutual benefits, which at the end, it works for everyone the best. Absolutely. And if I were to summarize in one sentence, um, it sounds like you, th th we had this previous slide showcasing all the different forms of engagement. Um, essentially, you're also potentially investing directly in the startups. You're also looking at uh, partnering with them, commercial pilot programs. M&A as well, and potentially future media for equity investments, depending on a few other aspects which we'll discuss. But all of the above. That's a good summary. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, Neville, we talked about this many times, and I really I would love for you to tell that story again, because I think that's, um, that's a perfect example of how media for equity started for the Times Group, and why the Times Group, probably what most people here don't know is that the Times Group it is one of the largest, if not the largest, investor of media capital, four billion dollars um, worth of media capital invested in over a thousand companies in the last 25 years. Um, but it started again with a need and a need to grow the print business and attract new customers to that print business. How did start? How this media for equity basically model starts? Yeah, so I alluded to that a little bit earlier. Uh, basically. Uh, as we saw the digital landscape changing in front of us, uh, as a 180 year old company, 180 plus years of old company, we have, like I said, media assets in radio in, and we invested massively in digital. Even today our digital grows uh, pretty aggressively. Uh, and just to give you an idea, recently there was an independent poll done about fake news who do you trust? Even though we have a very aggressive digital assets, most people came back and said we trust the print, the Times of India print, to be the most trustworthy source from where we get our information. And that's all because of what's happening about fake news, uh, because of the way digital media is being used by uh, people who decimate, uh, d d you know, uh, spread the information. So uh, the, the, we started it with an idea to say, we found these new age companies which are very exciting. Unfortunately, some of these new age companies did not have the muscle to really go out uh, and acquire customers aggressively. Any new startup, and when I speak to any of the CEOs of a startup or an early stage company, one of the challenges is that, you know, I have a good product, I have got a good engineering team, I have a team, but I just don't have enough resources to really 
uh, go after my customers, you know, and getting them to know about my product. And um, what is it that we as a media company could do to address that problem? So fundamentally, we positioned us as ourselves as the entrepreneur's friend that, okay, if the, in the three pillars of your success, marketing has to be one pillar. If marketing is one pillar, then we can come in now, you know, for possibly a future gain through our media assets. And somewhere down the line, that was a sweet spot which really stuck. From a media company perspective, what it did is it allowed us to expand categories. If you've been in the media business, uh, obviously there's advertisers in different categories. Now, what we found over time is that it really churned and steered up a particular category. So if we were to go to a young, dynamic startup, let's say in the real estate category, which at that point in time, and that's an example I'm giving, at that point in time really didn't advertise with us, we went and signed up with a real estate company, and by virtue of the media for equity deal, we suddenly found that all their competitors started advertising with us. So suddenly a, a, a sort of a dormant category suddenly started contributing advertising to the group. So there were two things that as far as the group was concerned, for the group, it's like we played the role well for the entrepreneur. We were the good Samaritans for the entrepreneur, helped it sort of grow, building brand awareness of their, of their company, uh, possibly even building brand valuation over time. And from a media company, we created a new category with generated advertising. That's a great example. It works both ways. So how you manage that equation is the key. And that's really fundamentally the media for equity model. Yeah, and we'll discuss um, in a bit, I think, the benefits, but as well where the opportunity really lies. And um, I would love to get your perspective on the U.S. market. And I think Dorota made a very interesting point earlier as well about um, how much the media landscape is different in Poland and potentially Eastern Europe and why maybe this model hasn't picked up here um, as fast as in Western countries. Um, and I think the unfair advantage that RTO Ad Alliance may have over here um, in terms of potentially scaling this model across Europe. Uh, so we'll talk about that as well. But um, just to conclude on models of working with startups, um, Stefan, maybe this, com this question is more from the RTO group perspective because, again, maybe what people perhaps don't know is that RTO is owned by the Bertelsmann Group. It is the largest European broadcaster, as far as I know, but you can correct me on that. Um, I hope so, still. <laughs> great. Um, but also, RTO, um, as you said, you have so many different affiliate partners, but you have RTO in Germany, RTO in other markets, and RTO Germany just two months ago announced launching a cash and a media fund yeah. um, after, uh, I think, a few years in the making. So. Tell us a bit about what is happening on RTO and how, how you're thinking about working with startups. Okay, um, yeah, for sure I can tell you. Uh, I, I mean, um, let me get it back a little bit why this, is, uh, this company, RTL Ad Alliance, is here and um, why we are working like this. So um, for us it's always about trends. I spoke already about trends, but I, I, I give you a quick glimpse of how I see it. So um, there are some clear trends popping up in my mind every day. So this is the, the, the first of all is um, SWOT players, streaming services, um, so subscription-based, if you don't know, are shifting towards AWOT. That means advertise-based. The legacy print publishers tapping their feet into video very much. Um, small, middle-sized enterprises are doing the first steps in mass media when using addressable TV, for example, to reach certain targeted audiences. And even retail, and that's especially for the US maybe, um, changing whole industries into, into media or video. That means for RTL Group, it's so important to understand that this is a huge challenge and a huge opportunity at the same time and it's from market to market different. So what does RTL Ad Alliance, and this is not the answer hopefully, is um, 
that they try to understand that. They give a simplified access to this qualitative curated legacy content uh, media per se. And this is out of uh, like one-stop shop, meaning there is a centralized, simple approach for the advertiser. And on the other hand, it creates great value for the partner. So talking about the giants again, whenever the giants have a unified approach and offer, the legacy broadcasters, and speaking for all of us, I guess, it's very cluttered. And so we need to be on the roof of something to create this collaboration and um, centralize it. Uh, for example, RTL has done even geo uh, combinations between US and Europe to work together with NBCU in, in the US and RTL on the other side, like in Europe, and uh, on new players uh, together with an existing sales force there is, uh, I saw somebody from LG and, and Samsung, they are tapping into the market together with the Salesforce we are having on RTL. So it's a lot of collaboration combinations going on too. So if I, if I was a startup, um, just to basically summarize and, and um, make it very simple, um, if I was a founder from the US market, essentially looking to tap into the European market, but also vice versa, if I wanted to scale my brand and if I needed that are advertising expertise, but also to work with media partners. Essentially what RTO Ad Alliance provides is, it provides is that access um, to all the different publishers um, and also kind of hand-holding the company when going into a new market. Yeah, thanks, forget about that to say. It's a very high consultative approach. So whenever we take the hand of somebody, it's really that we try to create the trust, as you said, and to give them the easy way how to do it. Yeah. So, um, uh, Dana, I just want to add yeah. something. Sorry. Oh, sure, okay. of course, please. So, from an entrepreneur or the founder perspectives, at some, I mean, most, a lot of the uh, presentations here were a lot of B2B and not necessarily B2C. And there is a, according to me, there, there is a fallacy that uh, advertising is only required for B2C yeah. companies, which is not true. Even B2B companies, you know, if they were to sort of reach out to organizations like RTB Alliance, RTL Alliance, they would be able to give you a much deeper understanding of a particular category in which you're operating and qualifies for reaching out to those, your customers in that particular category. So, you know, I think marketing of even B2B products is a very niche subject and must be looked at over time. That's what I felt. Just a quick comment as well. So sorry yeah. for no, not no, giving you time for the questions, but exactly, I think I wanted to, to, to also comment on that. I fully agree. And uh, that's why when we talk about very often when we, uh, uh, from the media perspective, we ask our clients or the partners what, what we want to achieve, who we want to talk, what, uh, who, who is the target then we probably can able to choose and to build the portfolio of the communication, the strategy of the communication to reach all those direct, consu direct consumers or the B2B sector. Because especially with, as we sit here as a, as a big company, you know, in Poland, our group reach I don't know, 34 million per month of the viewers, aided by their digital assets, 8 million. So the, the variety is there. You know the, the the tools and the possibilities. I think that it's important to start to talk to see what are the the, the goals, the targets, and how we can get there. And possibly, from my perspective, it's the new time. It's bringing the opportunity to use some of the solutions or some of the startup ideas right. in the company, because then also this collaboration can bring and accelerate the usage on, on the international basis, because we are all international companies who are based across the world. So I think a, the, there is a possible a new era of the cooperation, because the partnership those days is probably the one of the key element of the growth anyway. Absolutely. And I want to, uh, I see that we are approaching the end of the panel. I don't know how this happened so quickly, but um, I want to um, discuss about the opportunities and what's next, because um, a lot of people also are listening in and are watching this, um, this discussion online. 
and a lot of companies, I think investment and fundraising, and we'll see the finalists in a second, obviously pitching for potentially financial support, it's a big topic for a lot of founders. Um, media for equity or media capital has been around for quite a while, quite developed in Europe, um, but as we already established, some regions, some parts of the world are just getting started. Um, so in the next few minutes, I want to discuss about where you actually see the opportunity, what's, what's next. And um, Neville, we can maybe start with you because I think you have an opinion on what's happening on the U.S. market so, right now. So very quickly, since we're running short of time, yes, in the U.S. market, we are working, you know, we are working on a project which is really going to address uh, this particular media for equity model. It's not yet as popular done fragmentally. It's been done by in fragments in different house media houses, but we in plan to you know sort of work on this project. Uh, and I think probably Europe has more media for equity kind of opportunities right now as I see it. Yeah. Uh, in the US we are working on it and that's the pivot that we are looking at right now. And um, staying with the same idea, um, it is developed, but as, as we already established more in Western markets, Dorota, why do you think it hasn't really picked up that much in Poland or other parts of Europe? And what do you think has to change for that to happen? Well, I think that, of course, there are differences between Poland and, and the rest of the Europe. But I think at the end, uh, what is also important is the fact that the Poland is a, a enormous uh, potential because of the size, because of the opportunity and the growth which exists here, uh, very often uh, quite stable versus in other parts. So. There is a good opportunity and there is a very, very good positive note. I think that because of the uh, uh, inventory or the usage, I think that uh, that creates uh, uh, a need to, to, talk, to talk about the business models. And I think that while we talk and identify what we want to achieve together, there are potential the different ways to, to get there. So generally, I'm very positive. I think that uh, it's a new time, it's a new era, and especially that the old traditional media, as I said at the beginning, they're not traditional anymore, uh, only. <laughs> they're also sits or, uh, or stays quite strong on the second leg, which is a digital. Therefore, I, I invite you all for the cooperation. Great. Stefan, do you want to add something? Uh, quickly, yeah. Um, so, in my opinion, you all know your home media. They are all really local champions. They know the home market. They have adapted products for their market. They understand the advertiser coming from the market or the need for this audience. But that means they have products towards these markets. Could be media for equity in some of the markets for RTL. It's, for example, in Germany, as you said, in the UK, in Spain, they have funds for local players in the home market. In international, it's a different story, or tapping into foreign markets, as you guys also did. Um, it's not so easy, it's not so much there. You also have to speak with your partners, and we, that's why we are thinking clo more globally. We're trying to implement um, fundraisers, even external, but the experts then on our side. So that could allow somebody to go multinational with the need, with the help of our experts, but the money from an external fund. If I were to rephrase what you said, you're basically saying there is an opportunity for a pan-European potential media capital fund where you have a company, for example, sitting in Poland and looking to enter perhaps UK or the German market or other markets all at once and using the RTL Ad Alliance partners and RTL inventory. I mean, you see, I don't have hair anymore, so this is why I'm, I'm working on that a long time already. <laughs> okay. Um, there were so many other things that we wanted to talk about, but I think we're, we're, we are running out of time. Um, maybe just to conclude and, and, and invite everyone that has listened, um, if you would like to follow up on this topic. Um, clearly, there's two sides of, of the discussions here. If you are a company, if you're a startup that are thinking of fundraising, and as Neville said, it's not really just about consumer startups. If you are a, a SaaS business or a, more of a B2B2C company, I think this is still a model that you should think about. Um, but equally, if you are a media company that would like to understand more about how the, the, the mechanics work or how the fund model works, um, it won't answer all your questions, but hopefully at least it will provide a bit of context into what we discussed today in a bit more depth. There is an entire report which we released actually last October at Wolf Summit in Vienna, 
um, which is still very much up to date. So I encourage all of you to maybe download it. You can also reach out to me, but also to our guest if you have any questions and if you'd like to connect with us. And on that note, uh, I think it's time to listen to the finalists and also find out in probably an hour who's the winner of this year's Great Pinch Contest. <laughs>